Right, hello everyone. I'm David McLean, and the, my favourite thing about that is the bass line. That's what I'm most um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about delivery and why uh, delivery is becoming more and more important to you as online retailers and um, some of the problems that we're having with delivery in the market at the moment and some of the things that we can do about to solve those, some of those issues. And the analogy that I've decided to use is McDonald's. So, if you're like me, on occasion, you go to a McDonald's. And if you go to a McDonald's drive through you've already decided, um, before you've even got there, that you're having a hamburger, a small fries, and a Coke Zero, because you're healthy. <laughs> and then you drive around that corner, and you see that beautiful screen with all of those perfect things on offer. And that's like your great websites. And as you look at all of that, you think to yourself, well, oh, okay, I only came around for a hamburger, but this website's so amazing, I'm actually going to buy a bunch of other things. And if you're anything like me, you then decide that you're going to have a large quarter pound of cheese and the Coke Zero because you're healthy. And then you get around the corner and you place that order and there's that voice that says, would you like anything else? And just like your website says, so oh, somebody else bought this and this is something else that somebody else bought, you go, yeah, okay, you know what? I'll have an apple pie. Why? Well, I'll have an apple pie. No one cares. And you get that apple pie, then you go around and you collect everything and you're feeling so good about yourself and you're driving out. And as you drive out, you say to yourself, I'm not a pig, I'm not an animal, I'm going to eat this when I get home. I'm not going to, probably not going to touch it, but that salty goodness just starts affecting you and you put your hands in there and the apple pie is missing. And now you're just pissed off. Everything about that experience is gone. And that is what the delivery experience is like when you put all this effort into making a wonderful website experience and a wonderful purchasing experience and then you've been screwed by delivery. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Now, why are there so many problems with delivery at the moment? It is not the fault of the carriers. I know that's not popular, but I'm going to tell you right now, it actually isn't the fault of the carriers. The fact of the matter is the market has changed and we have more and more spikes that are occurring in terms of when people are placing orders. And those spikes mean that carriers need to put a lot of effort into planning effectively so that they can manage the capacity. And the reality, that's just really difficult. And if you heard what Craig was saying earlier about the employment position in our market at the moment, it is very difficult to find the people to actually do those deliveries. So we did some research with Power Retail and we know that more and more of um, our purchases are happening in these peak periods. In fact, 91% of online customers purchase something, 91% in the, of Australians purchase something online in the last three months. You can see that there are more and more of these sales periods, and let's be honest, it's looking pretty sad for Valentine's Day. It's just dropping away there, it's nowhere near as interesting. Maybe we can all have a talk with ourselves about that later. With the rise of e-commerce volumes, there has been a delay in the amount of um, parcels that people are able to deliver in a, in a single delivery cycle. The average carrier can, the courier can deliver somewhere in the region of about 120 to 150 parcels a day. So you think about what's happening, that person is trying to deliver between 120 and 150 parcels every day and the number of parcels continues to increase. What's going to give? The thing that gives is service service. That's what happens. 73% of us have had a parcel arrive later than the time that was stated when we placed that order. And that's one of those things that just immediately creates a bunch of um, dis dissatisfaction. But delays in delivery are not the only issue that we're having with parcel delivery. It's not just the time. Sometimes parcels get stolen, they get misplaced, they get delivered to the wrong place, uh, and sometimes it's just inconvenient for us to collect that parcel from the post office. All of these things are an extension of the purchase experience and they create dissatisfaction that actually has nothing to do with the retailer or the work that the retailer has done, putting all of that effort to, um, in place on their websites. I'm going to wait to the right. So, we believe that peak planning must include agility. Agility in your supply chain, agility in the way that you can um, organize your delivery, um, uh, delivery, delivery program and partners so that they can actually 
better manage the demand that you are creating through these peaks um, in your audio processes. Uh, so these choices um, require us to give customers alternate solutions for delivery that don't happen today. Simply put, if we can have agile supply chains and include new delivery choices, we're going to create more positive customer experiences. So, how do we create this agility? Well, the fact of the matter is, um, it is simply a function of capacity. If we have so many orders, so limited um, a position in terms of the ability to do those deliveries, and you want to improve service levels, something has to give. And the thing that needs to give is we simply need to create more delivery choices for our customers. Um, many um, supply chains simply don't have the ability to effectively forecast the peaks and uh, troughs that we currently have. You, know, you, just, you just cannot find the people to do that, right? The warehousing staff is not available, the delivery staff is not available. And sometimes um, because of those things, the service levels will continue to be the thing that causes, uh, that, that we um, uh, sit behind as the thing that's going to take the brunt of the solution. So the situation impacts um, customers and their confidence. 43% of us choose same day delivery because we're hoping to get the parcel within two to three days. So just think about that for a moment, right? You're not actually buying, you're not actually ordering something and saying I want same day delivery because you want same day delivery. You're doing it because you hope that by doing that you'll get your parcel within two to three days. So the knock on effect of that is that again just increases the stress on service levels, increases the demand for capacity, and therefore creates even more poor delivery experience because people simply aren't able to deliver those parcels in the time frames that you want. Further dissatisfaction. So, if volume is the problem, and we're trying to uh, find a way to manage more of those volumes through these peaks, what do we need to do? And the answer is simple. If you can do 120 to 150 deliveries a day, and you only have so many drivers, then you need to be able to deliver more items in a single drop as possible to increase your capacity. It's just basic math, right? So if you want to do that, you really should be giving your customers more delivery options. But most websites give two options for delivery, uh, fast or slow. Simple as that. You can have it express, or you can have it um, slow. <laughs> and when you say slow, you say, okay, you know, I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna get it within two or three days, and that doesn't happen. So you're not actually giving the customers the ability to create options that will actually reduce the pressure on you and give your customers more convenience. Now, this is what I always find interesting. I mean, you guys can guess I care about collection points and I care about um, things being delivered into other places. So I'll ask you a question. Why do you all have eight ways to pay and only two ways to deliver? Why do you do that? I know why you do it. You do it because you're trying to create as much stickiness as possible to your customer and giving your customer as many options as possible to stay with you and to continue to buy from you. And that's great, you do that, you should do that. And then you give them two ways, two ways to deliver, fast or slow. And then they have a poor experience, and who do you think they blame for that poor experience? Uh, you, it should be you. <laughs> so what then happens? If you actually give your customer some more um, delivery choices and some more experiences that they can choose from, what happens? If you look at the, um, slide I showed you before, a bunch of the issues that they have with delivery go away, right? If you use parcel collection points, then what you're doing is you're relieving some of the pressure on your supply chain. You're giving your customer alternate deliveries, uh, alternate uh, delivery solutions. Carriers are really happy. They get more density. That driver can drop off 20 click and collect parcels to one location that increases their capacity to continue to do more deliveries. The customer gets additional convenience and they get additional choices. 
And Rob said something that I thought was really important. He was talking about loyalty and what loyalty means to someone. Um, the same applies to convenience. Convenience means different things to different people. Sometimes it's convenient for me to pick my parcel up at a collection point. Sometimes it just isn't. I want my parcel picked up and um, delivered to me at home. So convenience depends and they're different things to different people at different times. Um, retailers create more stickiness. You give them eight ways to pay. Why don't you give them four ways to deliver? That gives that customer more reason to stay with you than go to the alternate who actually provides those services. And all of this um, happens whilst you're solving many of those issues around parcel delivery. You know, theft, as I said, stolen parcels, uh, parcels being misdelivered, the sorry we miss you card, and uh, uh, your parcel being sent back to the depot for re-delivery. Giving people the option to use click and collect locations, um, where they live, where they play, is, is a pretty powerful way to support customers. So we did some research and we found that um, there are preferences around where people would like to have these alternate delivery um, points. 70% of customers would like the option to send their parcels um, to collection points in different locations. But some of them want them at different times. So um, a large majority just want to be able to pick their parcels up um, during, work, during the work week, but after the end of the work day. So on the way home, maybe sometimes on the way to work. Um, a growing number of people, this number is growing year on year, want to pick parcels up on the weekend. And uh, some people just don't care about my business at all and just want it to continue to be delivered um, to their homes. So I don't really have time for them. Um, that's just the way people are. Um, delivery price obviously influences the shopper's behavior. And I do want to spend a little bit of time on this. 83% of shoppers would actually consider using different locations if there was a difference in price between that and shipping to home. Now, my suggestion is that delivery to home, as we're seeing in a number of markets around the world, is slowly going to become a premium service. Quite frankly, if you want delivery to home with the sort of volumes that we have in place and the economies of last mile delivery, and the fact that it's actually really quite difficult to make money as a carrier in large mile delivery, I think you'll see that there will start to be a premium for home delivery, especially for express delivery services, even two to three day delivery. And then there'll be a different price point for delivery to collection points or to alternate delivery locations. And then customers will be making a choice between those things. If I've just bought um, an amazing laptop, I want it delivered at home and I want a premium service and I expect that. But if I bought a, um, where's Craig, has he left? Because I was going to tell him that there's no such thing as a $5 lipstick. <laughs> but if I was um, you know, buying a $20 lipstick, I'm happy to pick it up at a BP petrol station on the way home from work, um, especially if it, it costs me a lot less. So we do think that we're going to start to see those changes, and we're already starting to see that around the world. So Zara, for example, now they charge less if you pick up your consignment from a collection point in the UK than if you actually demand home delivery for a Zara product. They're actively pushing their customers to use collection points. I would, I would suggest that the reason they're doing that is because they can actually negotiate a reduction in price on their delivery because the concentration of volume shipping to these locations is better than the individual volume shipping to individual stores and there's a density benefit that they get. And I think that there's going to be more and more sophistication in that area um, in Australia over time where retailers will start to look at their data, understand their customer preferences, and be able to negotiate better rates for their delivery services versus if, that, um, if those volumes are going to concentrated locations, collection points, or if they're going to home delivery. So we'll start to see that. Um, density in logistics does in, improve something, you know, deliver, delivered in full on time, dark operates for carriers. They really care about that. So, um, what the carrier gets is more efficiency, reduced costs, increased capacity, a better ability to meet the service level requirements that you put on them if you give them the opportunity to deliver to alternate delivery locations, which is pretty powerful thing. Well, customers get more delivery choices. 
you know, um, um, I can have this item delivered to home because that's important to me, or I can have this item delivered at a lower price point to a collection point because it's not as important, or it's not as time critical, or, or it just is something that um, uh, I don't necessarily need this at this point, or I don't, do not really want to give authority to leave for this consignment to be left outside, I'm uncomfortable with that, so I want to make sure that my item is actually secured somewhere um, that's safe and secure and I can pick it up at the time that suits me after hours or at a BP petrol station 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so those are the things that people will think about. The retailer will obviously get more options in the cart and so that I would, I would suggest creates more stickiness. So as I say, if you can have eight ways to pay, you can have two or three ways three or four ways to deliver. So it's, again, important to stress, uh, to stress that it's not a panacea. It is about giving people options. Nobody will choose one particular um, delivery service all the time. It's just about giving people more options. Now, <coughs> Australia is way behind on the adoption of these services, if you look at it in comparison to most markets around the world. In the Nordics, for example, 40% of consignments are actually click and collect. The logistics industry um, in Europe have worked this out. Um, very pervasive about pushing these services. Customers are adopting um, these services and understanding them. Australia's still got a ways to go towards actually um, embracing uh, click and collect services. But in a one billion um, uh, parcel market uh, for e-commerce as we are, um, there's still a lot of scope for growth. So we generally think that um, as retailers start to offer these services more and more often, uh, customers really will um, drive to adopt them. So I want to close by saying retailers who are focused on providing convenience um, for their customer should incorporate collection points or click and pick, click and click, click into, um, into their supply chains and to the delivery experiences of their customers. Uh, carriers will obviously encourage this because of the benefits that they get in terms of improving and meeting the service levels that you demand of them. Um, and customers will enjoy the fact that they now have these different and additional choices. Finally, and it's very important for me to say, is it's a more sustainable way to deliver. The reality is when you use collection points um, uh, as a delivery option, it reduces CO2 versus home delivery by about 50% on every single parcel. So if we want to do the right things um, as an industry, um, by our customers, by our environment, and by supporting the whole infrastructure and the whole network generally, we should really think about providing additional delivery options for our customers. Thank you.